So here at the Blue Coats, uh, from basically day one, uh, the electronics are a big part of the design process and the design discussion. We like to sort of consider it a, a, a pretty integral element within the musical fabric and texture uh, of the show. So what's exciting for me uh, about the amplification and electronics in general really has nothing to do with volume. Uh, it's our ability to amplify players and change the color of their sound. This year with, with the concept of kinetic noise we talked about putting speakers on the fields and creating what we call a sonic playground. Uh, up until now, you know, with the brass, we've had five, maybe six different colors we could use as, as arrangers, and uh, seven if you point them that way. But now, uh, thanks to the use of the electronics, Vince and Tom and I, we've been given this huge box of crayons that we can color with. Okay, for example, you take the introduction of the show, which takes main themes from the show and kind of spins them together, almost like a Pollock painting. They're kind of woven together. But in addition to that, the acoustic sounds that begin on the field are actually overtaken by our amplified soloists, and the, their timbre or their sound, or the color of their sound, actually evolves over time. So the setup basically consists of the what we call the mothership, which is right here and the mothership is basically the brains. We actually have our mixer um, on the performer side, and they're the ones that are actually doing all the live mixing. On the actual field itself, we have four pods, and each of those pods has a speaker, subwoofer, and two microphones. So we have a Cat5 connection that goes all the way around the field and connects with the mothership 2 connection back there. Now, the mothership 2 is what brings sound to the speakers, but also collects sound from the microphone. In the first week of, of All Days, um, Eric Cosman just did a brilliant job um, soldering cables and just running a ton of line. I think we measured it's, it's about a half mile of cable that we're using this year um, all around the field. Now, within this setup, it, we've uh, run into some challenges, and one of those challenges is what we call latency. This is a big issue because there's lots of space between the back speakers and the front, and the sound takes a while for it to reach us. And if you're you know, playing a keyboard here, there's not a whole lot of latency between when you play the note and when you actually hear the note, but when you're using these back speakers, there's a ton of latency. At certain moments in the show, we've had to actually add delay to create rhythm. One of the moments that we do this is during the trumpet loops um, in our second production, Electric Counterpoint. What we had to do with each note of the trumpet loop, we had to add like a certain amount of delay in order for it to maintain a perfect eighth note at 192. Now what this requires is our performer Kyle here on the DTX to play perfect eighth notes at 192 every single show, but it also requires the core to play at 192 perfectly every single rep, um, or else it gets really, really uncomfortable really quick. So one of the goals with the sampled brass sounds, much like the pitch band last year, is we really don't want the listener to know or to be able to tell where the one sound ends and the next sound begins. That's part of the surprise element, part of the gag. Uh, and we used it to great effect last year. Now this year with the trumpet loops, we have a similar situation where uh, we have uh, small groups of acoustic brass players playing the Reich loop, and that is overtaken by a sample of those same six players. And what that does is it frees up those six players to create visual effects without any scene, or that's the goal at least. And again, you see these trumpet loops uh, brilliantly staged, pan from left to right across the field. And uh, you know, it's our intent that there's a bit of a big surprise at the end of that because you wonder where did all these trumpet players come from? I thought they were playing. I would say about 80% of the samples that we use in the show are actually um, affected uh, sounds from the actual core itself. So um, there's a lot of you know, brass samples that we've sort of taken and processed and used that as sample sounds, but those are our performers that went into a recording session and um, we're using their actual physical sound. So uh, not to uh, show you how the clown puts on its makeup, but the reason that we actually sample the players is we don't want anybody to be replaced by a synthesizer. We want them to be involved in every part of the performance element of the show. So I think the thing that we're most excited about with, with the sound setup this year is that sound um, is no longer just in front. Now we're able to, to create like a backdrop of sound. And I think in part two, when we're doing a lot of like panning back and forth with the tremolo strings, that's kind of a cool um, moment that we weren't able to do before because it, you know having that so much presence up front would have obscured the brass sound. 
So, um, you know, that in addition to being able to create focus, like in part three, we have muted trumpets that are that are all the way side two, and your, your focus is back you know, into that corner where it never would have been before um, without the amplification possibility. So we're breaking new territory, um, we're forging new grounds, you know, we're, we're basically writing uh, a story of how to do this stuff, and we're really excited about what's come of it.